there's nothing you can control in your life in terms of circumstances. Absolutely nothing. But you can always control how you respond to them. When you do what, what you enjoy doing, then you never work a day in your life. I told my family that I was going to be a nurse when I was five years old, and I never changed my mind. It's risky to not being yourself. That's the real risk of, of knowing what you should be doing with your life and not doing it, because then I was literally risking my life because I wasn't living it. I was born to be creative. So it's important for me to always be creative one way or another because it's how I breathe. You gotta breathe. To be in the ocean is, is, is breath, it's life, it's breathing. If I'm not in the ocean, I'm not myself. It's just raw and wild out there. All you know is that what comes next might kill you but you learn how to keep your mind and body calm in those situations and turn it into something magic and beautiful. And um, I think that's how I've tried to approach this diagnosis. When my mom was 45, I was 15 years old and a sophomore in high school, she was diagnosed with um, stage four ovarian cancer. I mean, it was a lot different back then. So in my uh, junior year, when I was 19, she passed away. So I have this gene that has been killing my family for generations. At the exact same time, it made, it for my, made a tumor in my mom, it was making a tumor in me. I decided to have a double mastectomy with reconstruction and a total hysterectomy. I'm going to have to stay out of the water for four weeks. I need to be in the ocean. The ocean allows you to escape those dark corners of your mind and connect to something that's larger and you know, more powerful than yourself. I think the hardest part about cancer is not knowing what's going to happen next. I am actually an oncology nurse. I had my second child in April and was following up on some symptoms after pregnancy. She was about five months old when I was diagnosed. It's a rectal cancer. It's definitely an eye opener from the start. I mean, my patients were one of the first things to pop into my head. Something I used to tell my patients is like, oh, this is just gonna be a phase in your life. And I would try to use that to be encouraging. Now I worry that that was just trivializing it all. There is a little bit of a story behind the bell. There was a three-time cancer survivor who um, donated the bell to us. It's signifying what's next. It's kind of the beginning of the next phase. You know, it's an alarm clock. Time to wake up, get back to life. Well, I'm going to ring the crap out of that bell someday. So lidocaine can numb it up. If you could only inject my heart with that. One of the hardest things at first is, uh, if you look at that sign, this goes oncology, hematology, and it's a lot different than seeing a sign that says gas food lodging or cocktails pizza. And, it's a whole nother world, and you're doing it in a whole nother language. When I first was diagnosed, I was very depressed about it. I truly believed that if I had a year, I was lucky, um, because my cancer is stage four, thyroid cancer. And what I thought that meant was I was on the way out. I've since learned it doesn't mean that. It just means it's incurable. It just means we have to keep finding different ways to fight it and treat it and try to hold it back. If, if you get a cancer diagnosis, um, it's kind of like a, a shot across the bow that, hey, you aren't going to be here forever. And if there's some things you want to do, you better get busy doing it. But the funny thing about that is 
is that we're all in the same boat. It's just that I've been alerted and you haven't. I've had the testicular cancer twice and esophageal cancer once. I had a first when I was 28. And then last July, I uh, found out that I had esophageal cancer. I'm going, again, the odds, the odds. People always ask me about gloves, boxing gloves. I go, are you a boxer? And I go, no, this is a fight. People on that, on that highway of life, every six months or to a year, I, I have to pull up to a toll gate. And I'm in a CT scan, and I wait for the results and wait for that gate to come up so I can get back on the road. And I just have to hope that, you know, when I go to the CT scan, that uh, it's a happy ending of continuance. Your mind immediately goes to your children after being diagnosed with cancer. You wonder, am I going to be able to lift my daughter up after surgery? Am I going to be able to cook them dinner, get them up in the morning? One of the first things she said to me after we learned of her diagnosis was, you didn't sign up for this, and that ripped my heart out. <laughs> I think birthdays are a lot more special now. I think it just means a little bit more. It means like I'm not the age I was diagnosed at anymore. And so that even feels different, you know, like now I'm 34. So I'll always have been diagnosed at 33. And I feel like it was just a little bit of a, a mental leap, you know, like it's on to the next year, but we're really looking forward to the after chemo party in five weeks. <laughs> I think it's important to do things for the first time, no matter how old you are. I'm 68 and I'm still doing things for the first time. I am so passionately involved with beauty and art that I am able to put my illness out of my mind. I don't even think about it. Kind of late in life to start oil painting at 67, but it's turned out really well. I also write spoken word and poetry. Marching swiftly to and fro, sell it high and buy it low. Make a dollar, go spend three, that's the life for you and me. Retirement planning, tax receipts, backyard landscape fantasies, birthdays, anniversaries. I and have a heart, but I think I directed my first film. You go, not you. Just keep bowing. And so let's try that again. Now, I am an artist in residence for a professional dance company out of Denver. It's, it's the joy of my life. It's my true passion. It opens on the 11th of August. So we're getting darn close. We're only eight weeks away, I think. So today we have with us the, the inimitable, the wonderful gentleman and scholar, Mr. Billy Foster. <laughs> Thank you for having <laughs> us. I started to look around. I didn't recognize the person you described. <laughs> So I have renal cell carcinoma. I think music is a healing force. My mind has to be occupied with what I'm doing, and so it can't be occupied with thinking about I have cancer. I'm occupied in, in creating this music. She has a built-in piano player, and I have a built-in singer, so. That's why I married him. That, <laughs> she's been a tremendous help to me. Uh, I couldn't have made it through this thing with, without Renee. She goes to all my appointments. You had to give me a kiss. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and they say he, he looks good. Billy looks good. But see, they didn't see the other side when he was severely ill. I can remember playing through sick times, but um, you, just like everybody else, you play through them.
Monday morning, I'm going to fly with my daughter to Panama City. I'm really looking forward to just being in the ocean with my daughter. It happens tomorrow, you kind of get the verdict. You're sitting there as the jury in. And uh, you look, and man, you're looking for that oncologist, and you're hoping they're smiling. You know, the results uh, could be devastating. And, uh, you know, I'm not looking forward to finding out that I might have to go through chemo again or that uh, uh, cancer could have possibly spread. So what are you doing tonight? I'm going to tell some jokes. I'm going to talk about I'll be up to the stage and I'll tell people how to CT scan and try to come up with a CT scan joke and then and then I'll ask for their support. I'll say, you know, I'm going for the scan tomorrow. I'm going for a result and uh, I, pre I would appreciate your support. We're going to bring up your next comic. Please welcome very talented Fred Reese. Come on up, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Fred Reese. I'll, I'll start and tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a uh, three-time cancer survivor. Uh, thank you. Thank you. When I was going through chemo, I, I, was, I was pale, I was bald, and no one felt sorry for me because they thought I was a vegan. <laughs> I almost died three times to say that joke. Give me a break. Where are your souls, people? Where are your souls? I don't feel I have cancer when I'm on the stage. I'm completely Fred. I'm no longer the guy who has cancer. I'm the guy who's talking about cancer. And the thing that was incredibly satisfying about it is instead of people saying I was just funny, uh, they would come out of the shows and they were emotionally moved and I had inspired them, which I never anticipated. This is real as it gets. Mother to cancer, father, sister, so many people. So anybody that's still here, Hey. God bless, man. God bless you. I think what happens when you go through this is you're just forced to face death, and facing death forces you to evolve. You know, it's just about being at peace with what's inevitably going to happen with all of us. Sometimes you just have to sit with it. Um, it's real. The pain is real. The challenges are real. The fear is real. You do have to find a new normal. I laugh with my doctors. My husband and I have found a way to be honest with each other. He was verklempt. I mean, he was about to lose his best friend here. We had no idea what was going to happen. And at a certain point, I had to say, Betty, I got to be able to cry when I feel like I need to cry. I got to be able to face this because I don't have the energy to pretend so that you don't hurt. And he had to figure out how he was going to deal with losing his precious girl because that's who I am. I look up at the sky and talk to the great unknown, and I go, I'm making a difference. I learned I'm making a difference. You, you've got to let me stay. you got to let me stay. I, I want to stay. I, 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 I'm making a difference. It has to count for something. It's got to mean something. So we're headed to my work. It's where I go every day. Um, something about today is I'm also um, going to get my chemo treatment, and it's um, actually my last chemo treatment. I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous, but um, regardless, today is going to be a celebration. Why are you sitting in there? Because I was going to get ready to get my special medicine. Is it your last medicine? It is my last medicine. Do you want to push the start button on my last medicine? Do you see this little blue button right here? Yeah. Okay, we're going to hit that, okay? Can you reach it? Yeah. Okay, and go. Are you going to help me ring a big special bell? Yeah. Oh my god. 
goodness, are you going to ring it super loud? Yeah, super duper loud. <laughs> super duper loud. No matter what my future holds, this is, you know, it signifies accomplishing this first battle. Oh, Mama's done. Yay! Yay. Oh. Mama chemo, over. <laughs> Say thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Let's ring the bell and put your hand on it. Ready? One, two, three. I have to walk in here and get a verdict. Wait in the hope that she comes in smiling. And then if she's not, I'm then to see where I go. You know, if something's spread or I have to go through chemo again. Okay, hey. hello. Okay. How's it going, Fred? Good, good. I'm, I'm right. semi-optimistic you're smiling. Yeah, and... I'm smiling. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the skin looks really good. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I'm very, very pleased. So, yeah, how is your I'm excited for the opportunity to know that I'm going to be around. When you've been diagnosed with stage four cancer, you have this laser-like focus on living, on the moment that you're living in, on the potential for joy and beauty and love and all of those things, courage and grace and kindness, all of those things get very, very real. And in some ways, it's a blessing. It wakes you up. We're gonna gather up all the positive energy and we're going to bring it to us and we're gonna release it with a yes! yes. You better follow me. Yes! Yes! One more! Yes! I lost my mom, my mom lost her dad. You know, I don't know how long, how far back there's been death at a young age, which means a kid suffering. I feel very fortunate to be this first generation that is living. Getting in the water for the first time after four weeks of being out because of surgery, it's just a feeling of peace. Playing with Nami in the ocean just makes me feel whole again. Nami means wave in Japanese. She's my lifelong wave. It doesn't end. It, you, you're changed now. Nice hit, buddy! Run, run, run! That way! First base! Long way! It doesn't go back to normal. There's a new normal. You're doing everything you can today and then you're gonna do everything you can tomorrow, and it just continues. The future for me is more music, more writing, more teaching, and so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about the future. With me. With Renee. Look at this, I'm, I'm walking. I, 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 I made it, I made it. And I'm walking for other people. You know what? I have to be that punch. Cancer is like Apollo Creed. He's coming after me. So I have to be that punch every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day for the whole time I deal with cancer. And all I'm saying, I'm giving these gloves to you too. And thank you for having me be here. Thank you. It's the best time of my life. 
I know what's at stake. I know what's possible, what's valuable, and I know what my priorities are. And living every day with no regrets is one of them.